Um, and I'd like to welcome everyone else who made the effort to get here um, today. It's not the ideal day for heading out and collecting in a small space. Um, but I'd also, before we go any further, like to acknowledge the traditional owners of this land and pay our respects to the elders, past, present and future. Um, my name is Jenny and um, after retiring, I think, three times now, I finally found the perfect job. <laughs> and that's working with AGA um, in our new premises in Ainsley. Um, it's been an amazing um, time since the budget in June, with lots of highs and a couple of not so high bits. Um, and things are just taking off at an exponential rate. So it's a great privilege to be here tonight when I think about where we were last year and where we were like two years ago. And for people who have been around much longer than me, um, just how much things have changed and how quickly that change has come, <laughs> relatively speaking. Um, I get to do some introductions tonight. So the first person um, that I'm going to introduce is um, the person who now has the title of our executive director, which I was under threat of death not to use. But I think it, on the first time that you get to have an executive director, you have to actually say, but for the rest of the night, I'm just going to refer to him as Peter, OK? Because that's actually how. And this is actually, I think, the first time that Peter's actually been convinced to actually speak at one of these events. So I'm going to hand over to Peter now, and um, we'll go from there. First of all, it's great to see so many people here. Um, and it's especially great not just to see so many trans and intersex people, their family and friends, um, but also to see so many people from the broader community, not just the LGBTI community, but the community more broadly. So welcome, all of you. Um, over the last month, there have been a couple of internationally recognised days that have happened. Uh, Intersex Awareness Day on the 26th of October and Trans Day of Remembrance on the 20th of November. The focus of those days is on educating the wider community and also on the discrimination and violence that results in so many people from our community no longer being with us. It's a focus on what we've lost and a, and a focus on what we haven't yet achieved. So while we acknowledge the importance of both those days, we were really keen this year to celebrate something that we actually have. And Social Inclusion Week provided us with the perfect opportunity to celebrate our community. When I talk to people from trans and intersex organisations around Australia and indeed around the world, I always get jumped on or almost lynched when I use the word community. Because people keep insisting that there is no such thing as a trans and intersex community, that there never can be such a thing as a trans and intersex community, that it is simply an impossible thing to achieve. What we have right here is really unique, not just in the ACT and not just in Australia. Last year we participated in a project being run by Transgender Europe. The project worker had spoken to thousands and thousands of trans and intersex organisations from all around the world before she spoke to us. She was completely blown away by what is happening here. It wasn't the law reform stuff, it wasn't the information and training, it wasn't the support and counselling or any of that other kind of work that we do. It was the sense of community that we have here. She hadn't seen anything like it anywhere else in the world. But for me, community isn't a separate thing to the rest of the work that we do. Building community and building people's capacity to engage with that community is intrinsic to the very process of achieving change. The key issues for trans and intersex people in Australia and all around the world are about stigma, discrimination, lack of recognition, and much, much poorer mental health and wellbeing outcomes. Social isolation, the lack of a community is the glue that binds all of those things together. Some people try to create change by changing laws. Other people try to create change by educating communities. What we have discovered is that we can create change by the very process of building community. 
In 2011, we ran a social inclusion project which was funded by the ACT Health Promotion and Grants Program. It aimed to engage with 50 individuals over the course of a year. By the end of that project, 103 people had participated. We saw a 16% improvement in people's psychological well-being, a 29% improvement in people's self-esteem, and 90% of participants said that they had made new friends and social, social networks that extended beyond the end of the project. I think these outcomes are really impressive, but they were actually achieved really quite easily, because all we did was create a space and terms of engagement that were respectful and inclusive, and people found us. In finding us, they also found each other, and they also found the space to really be themselves. Some of these people had spent 20, 30, 40, 50 years of their life feeling scared, ashamed, and alone. Their sense of relief at finding us is completely indescribable. No individual or group of individuals or organisation can claim credit for any of this. The beauty of community is that it's made up of the contributions that every individual brings to it. The beauty of community is that it's not just about what the community offers individuals, but equally, and I actually suspect often quite more, about what individuals offer their community. Because having a community to contribute to, a community where that contribution, no matter how big or small, is genuinely valued, it just makes people feel good about themselves. Over the last year, we've seen a huge shift at both a local and a national level in the airplay that trans and intersex issues are receiving. <coughs> and I don't think this is any coincidence. For me, there is a direct link between the strength of our community and the success that we have in achieving change. The wallet car that's going to be launched later this evening is a perfect example of this. A collaboration between us and the ACT Human Rights Commission that sprang directly from engagement that was happening within our community. The visibility of our community means people are more aware of the issues, and the strength that each one of us gets from our community means that more and more of us are able to participate in conversations and share our stories. It's no accident that we're being noticed on a national level that we're being invited to participate in conversations about passport reform, discrimination protection, changing government policy at a whole range of levels. Because even if those people don't really understand what's happening here on the ground, they know that it's something pretty special, something that they need to take notice of. I'm conscious that all through this I've been speaking in the third person, and I shouldn't, because all the things I've been talking about tonight are just as true for me as they are for any other person who's part of our community. Because I need this community as much as anyone else <coughs> needs it. And of course, being part of this community has brought meaning to my life in a way that I really had never felt before. It's a very, very precious thing. It's a very special thing to be part of. And, uh, I think it's certainly something we're celebrating. Thank Woo! You. Thanks, Peter. You always make it sound, yeah, really excellent. And that's because it is really excellent. And um, I did welcome everybody earlier, but I was as struck as I was listening to Peter and watching the little people running around. I remember. I think two, maybe three years ago, um, Harper and Ruby, who's also here, were like only one and they were running around and people were worried that their noise might interrupt the solemnity of the event. And I was actually thinking afterwards, everybody was like, oh no, it was really lovely. And so tonight we've got like our youngest members. I think we've got like Luca and Louie and Ruby and Harper and Grace and there might be some other sm small people around. And we've also got our eldest member, I'm just going to embarrass her completely, who just celebrated her 75th birthday with us, Liz, um, was the first event we had at our house on the first night. So we're a very good community. That's what makes it so special.
special. There's a place for everyone. Um, we're, now going, we're now going to hear from three of our community members who are actually going to take about five minutes each and just tell you a little bit about their stories in the context of celebrating community. As you can imagine, um, if you're not used to doing this sort of thing, it's quite daunting and so I imagine they're all a little bit nervous and can't thank them enough for actually putting themselves front and centre. Um, so first of all, I'd like to welcome Romana. Hi, um, it's actually Romana de Borgia, I know I've got plenty of other this. Um, but I thought I might start with um, a little bit about social exclusion um, so I can actually tell you where I came from and what social inclusion is to me. Um, I'm an intersex person and for me social exclusion started really young. Um, around about the age of four or five I was basically told um, I shouldn't tell people about me and, and, and things about me and um, I should never go to sport um, which was kind of handy in high school because the teacher would say, okay, you're another excuse from your parents, okay, if you're not going to do the sport, you can go sit over there with the girls, and I thought, woohoo! <laughs> um, but social inclusion to me has meant, um, the main thing is loneliness. Um, I was not encouraged to have friends over, I was not encouraged to develop my social skills, um, I was not encouraged to be social, and I became rather isolated, um, and um, it's in, in times when other people, I guess, um, you get lonely and you need to talk to someone. I never had that someone. I never had someone to hug. I had about eight teddy bears. Um, so, yeah, I've led an extremely lonely life. Um, I got depression quite young, about 16. Um, I was thinking of suicide quite often. and. I think a lot of gender diverse people do think of suicide for various reasons, not just because society rejects them, but because of the loneliness. So, when I moved to Canberra, I started getting involved in uh, Agenda Agenda, and I was actually extremely excited when they had the social inclusion program. I thought, wow, interesting things, things to do with other people, um, and things I can do in a safe place. So, our first event was actually at the Dixon Swimming Pool. And I love to swim, but um, I hate it when people stare at me when I'm swimming. Um, so I went along and I could wear a swimsuit that I wanted, um, and I could use the change room that I wanted, and I could pretty much be myself. And it was great. I, I went swimming, I enjoyed it, we played um, water volleyball. I discovered that if, if you throw the ball at someone and it bounces water in their face, it goes straight over the head. They don't catch it. So it was great. It was a it was a youthful, joy-filled experience. It was trouble-free, no hassles. I could do my own thing. And that was just the beginning. Um, we had more events. We had, and I in fact um, had the first Skillshare event, which was um, sharing my skills in, in container gardening. And it was great. We just focused on our little thing, wore what we wanted, um, did pretty much what we wanted, shared our skills, chatted, socialised in what I would classify a normal group. And we just did normal stuff. And it happened throughout the year. Um, and it, it culminated last uh, December when we went down the coast and we had a, um, a camping day and it was two camping days. It was great. Um, throughout the entire year, people were sharing their skills, talking, chatting, and just doing everyday things. I'd say normal, but I don't believe in normal. So, for me, it was going from someone who had hardly any social contacts, um, I've only been in Canberra for about 12 years, someone who, who pretty much had so poor social skills that um, I, I didn't even realise when someone said, oh, I saw you at that thingy and I, I wanted to give you a hug. I thought, oh, two days later. That could have been an invite for a hug. I don't, know, don't have the social skills to know. Um, so um, I've actually been developing my social skills through these events and it's also wonderful to see the other people who came along as well, not just myself, other people got lots of things out of it. And we have really well and truly become a community because not only was there us um, doing the events but we were doing other things as well, developing our networks 
We had a member who had to go to Sydney and they were sick and they were worried about transport and looking after their cat. And we arranged it all. Not as a social inclusion thing, but as a just a friendship thing amongst the people who, who we had formed networks with and are still forming networks with. And I hope that um, some of the funding will also be used for model those events so we can increase our networks even further. So that's what social inclusion is for me. Thank you. Thank you, Romana. The first time I met Romana, we ended up doing a car trip to Sydney. And you know what it's like, how awkward it is when you actually just get stuck, stuck with someone you haven't met and you're just like, well, what will it be like and what will we talk about for all those hours? And we talked the whole way and Romana just shared bits of her story and I was just absolutely bowled over by her calmness and her presence and her serenity in the face of some really, really hard things and she's a very, very wise person. So thanks for sharing that with us all, Romana. And now is the amazing Sally Ann. <laughs> People. I'm so glad to be here tonight to be able to tell you a bit about my journey and also the way my life has changed through basically meeting with a gender agenda and how a gender agenda actually saved my life last year. Um, I, about two years ago, told my wife that I was trans. My marriage is folded. Um, I came back to Canberra because at that time I was living in Wollongong. Um, I came back to Canberra and I had no idea what my life was going to be like and everything like that, but I just knew that I needed to do something about sorting out where my life was going to. So after meeting with a few counsellors and everything like that, and they decided that yes, I was definitely transgender and I needed to decide what I wanted to do with my life. Well, finally, on the 21st of February of last year, I went out uh, in public as Sally Ann for the very, very first time. But talking about the social side is um, really quite amazing because it is really quite lovely because um, the first time I ever went to an agenda agenda type meeting, um, they put Priscilla Queen of the Desert on a DVD and it was really quite amazing. Like it might be a stupid story but then I realised that night that I laughed for the first time in two years. And then later on in that time, um, I went through a pretty dark situation where my ex was uh, really giving me a hard time and everything like that. And I almost committed the ultimate decision at one stage. But the only thing that kept me going was, I said, well, I found all these really, really remarkable, wonderful people that I've met um, through a gender agenda. And also that I thought to myself, well, I'd really like to see where my life is going to. And with the social events and some of the stuff that I've been involved with with the Gender Agenda, it's been really, really great, like um, the odd sessions where we've learned how to do makeup and stuff like that. And another thing too is we've just gone through a really quite an amazing thing where we've just um, did our own story, our own transitioning stories, and we've also um, just managed to put them onto digital type format. So they've got not only with dialogue, but also pictures at the same time. So I think that a gender agenda has probably been one of the best things that I've ever done in my life because the simple fact is that I've met a lot of really quite amazing people. And to just reiterate what Romana said, for a long, long time I thought that I was the only person in this entire planet that felt like that they wanted to live as a girl, even though I was biologically born as a guy. So. After meeting up with other people who had the same experiences or the same lifestyle that I thought, it was just really quite an eye-opener, it was just quite lovely because um, to be able to go somewhere and actually let your hair down and be who you really, really wanted to be is really an ultimate sort of decision type thing. And I just think that, um, yes, we have got a really amazing community, we've got some really amazing people. I've met some really, really wonderful people that I classify as very, very dear in my life. And without a gender agenda and the other groups around the place, I wouldn't probably be the person who I am today. And I keep on saying that my new lifestyle has equipped me in such an amazing way because about five months ago I felt like 
someone had actually climbed into my head and removed the old disk drive and put this really fantastic new disk drive in with all this really, really quite amazing stuff that I really didn't know that I had. And the scariest thing about that was that that person was inside me for 55 odd years and suddenly this person came out and I really, really am quite happy with what I'm doing. So I just like to say, yes, we have got a really quite an amazing, diverse community, but thank God we do. So you can see why I introduced her as the amazing Sally Ann, because even when things are really grim, and just in the short while I've known Sally Ann, there've been lots of bits of grimness, but um, the next time you have a conversation with her, something's always amazing. And it's really good to be around someone who can always look for the positive, even when there are hard things going on. Thanks, Sally Ann. Thanks for checks in the mail, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> and now we have Max. Yes. Uh, hi, as Jenny said, my name is Max and uh, I've only been working with AGA for a couple of months now. Um, so I'm really very new to the community. Um, and Sally Ann and Romana already touched briefly on a feeling of loneliness. Um, and I guess being trans is, is a really unique thing, you know. It, you're not just going to walk down the street one day and meet somebody just like you. Um, you have to go away to find somebody who feels the same way. Uh, but unlike Romana, um, when I was growing up, I was never isolated. I was never excluded. So I, I didn't get that feeling. Um, but that doesn't mean that I didn't feel alone. Um, it's a very unique thing to be standing in the middle of a room full of people and to feel like you're the only one there. Um, and I had huge problems growing up, huge uh, social issues. I did not know how to respond, how to engage with people, and I found that most of the personality that I put forward was a lie. Um, just because I couldn't feel comfortable to be myself around people that I didn't know. Um, 